Hello, this is Jürgen from MapleSoft and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the bivariate limits feature in Maple. Uh, limits of uh, bivariate functions or functions in more than two variables even uh, are tasks that often occur in second and third year calculus at university and often the methods used to calculate those limits seem to be very ad hoc. Now in Maple we have a systematic way of computing such limits. Uh, so let's look at this first function f here. just hit the enter key to uh, evaluate it and then we compute the limit of it at the origin <clears throat> and the limit is not defined and so for the moment we have to believe that but uh, maple actually has a proof for that and we will see in a moment why and here's another example function g uh, where we also compute the limit at the origin and the limit exists and it is zero so uh, we can uh, visually verify that by plotting those two functions. So we start, first start by plotting the function f. And you can see here clearly that the limit doesn't exist. There seem to be a whole slew, a whole interval of uh, accumulation points. And we, we will describe that in more detail later. And here's the plot of the second function g. We can see it's very nice and smooth. The origin is just in the middle of this surface and you can visually uh, verify that the, the limit actually exists and, and is zero. Uh, now in the first, coming back to the first example, there seem to be two diagonals here. So if you look at the, uh, at the uh, there's this one diagonal here where the limit seems to be minus one. And if I scroll back up a little bit again, uh, there's another diagonal here uh, where the limit seems to be plus one. And uh, from the visual example, we can actually verify that. So we take the two diagonals. The one is where the y coordinate is equal to x, and the other one is where y is equal to the negative. And those are univariate limits, and Maple's univariate limit functionality can easily compute those limits. So the limit for y equals x is actually equal to 1, and the limit for y equals minus x is equal to minus 1. Um, <clears throat> and what we see now is in the first example, we actually plot those two diagonals. So the blue one is the uh, diagonal uh, given by the equation y equals minus x, and the red one is the diagonal given by the equation y equals x. And if you take the limit along one of those diagonals, then you can see it's a, it, the value of the function um, on those diagonals actually happens to be constant, and it's always 1 or minus 1 respectively. Okay, so uh, this is what uh, Maple does automatically, and you can use plots in order to verify Maple's answers. But how? Uh, what's the mathematics behind this? How is this actually done? So the way this is done is by we we in in our minds we take a circle uh, around the origin, which is the limit point of radius r. So it's given by this equation here, x squared plus y squared minus r equals zero. So we define that equation. And then this is a well-known um, theory in uh, constraint optimi optimization. So this is done by looking at a circle, C, um, around the origin of radius r, which is given by this equation here. Uh, x squared plus y squared minus r squared equals zero. And uh, conceptually we will let the radius go to zero so, so that we approach the origin more closely and closely. Now there's a well-known theory of Laglanche multipliers from constraint optimization and it says that the maximal values of the function f on such a circle for a fixed radius r uh, satisfies a certain condition, namely the condition that the gradient of the function um, f uh, or g in our case and the gradient of the constraint have to be parallel. Okay, and so this is, uh, we can compute this in Maple, so we have com already defined the circle r. Uh, we take the gradient of our function f, that's given by, uh, by this vector here, and we take the gradient of the constraint uh, given by this vector, and then so if we want those to be parallel, th then the determinant given by those two vectors has to vanish. So that gives us an equation, which we see here, um, and the maxima and minima of the function f 
on the circle x squared plus y squared minus r squared um, are given when both the equation of the circle is satisfied and this equation that we just determined is satisfied. Um, now this equation gives, <clears throat> we can solve that for one of the variables x or y respectively and it is sufficient to consider um, limits which are now univariate limits that follow the paths that are given by the solutions to those equations. We also call those paths the critical paths. Now this is a nonlinear equation in general unless your original problem consists of polynomials um, and in general the solutions are very complicated and hard to compute but since all we need uh, we want to uh, determine the local behavior of uh, our function f uh, uh, what we do is we compute a Taylor expansion of this function. This can be done in Maple using the command n Taylor and now we look at the solutions of or rather approximate solutions of this equation which in itself is an approximation of the critical equation that we were interested in. Um, the first thing we do is we look at the low degree parts of this equation. So the lowest degree that appears here is degree 4. So we select the terms of degree 4 and then we try to find all solutions of, uh, of this part, uh, again of this approximation. And so we can clearly see here there is, um, um, it's a degree four polynomial, so it has four solutions in total. Two of them are real, namely the solution y equals x and the solution y equals minus x. Those are exactly the two critical curves that we had before. And we can see that those, uh, what we computed so far are approximate solution, but those are actually uh, exact solutions to our critical equation. And the remaining solution where x squared plus y squared equals zero is not real, so we can ignore it. So we've actually found, uh, and that was a bit of luck because all we had to look at was the low degree part of the Taylor expansion, we found computationally the critical perfs and we can plot them and those are the uh, two diagonals. And so in this case, uh, the critical curves are actually lines, but that is not the case in general. So if you look at our second example where the limit exists, um, again, we take the Jacobian of our function and we take the Jacobian of, um, of the circle and then we compute the determinant of those two vectors and that gives us the critical equation for our second example. And we can plot this equation in order to see all the critical curves and you can see here that there are two critical curves which we can also directly see from the equation, namely x equals zero and y equals zero. So those are lines. But there's another critical curve which is not a line which is given by the third factor in that equation. And so now we, uh, we create a vector that has all the critical curves in it, so the two lines x equals 0, y equals 0, and the last one which is also linear in y, so it can be easily solved for y, uh, which is a nonlinear, gives you a nonlinear curves. And now we compute the limits along those critical curves. So for x uh, equals 0, the limit is the function just simplifies to y and the limit is zero. For the second one, which is y equals zero, the function simplifies to this and we take the limit for x goes to zero and it's also zero. And the third one is the nonlinear curve, <clears throat> which also gives us a univariate function, but again, the limit is zero. So we have now found all the critical curves, all the solutions of the critical equation. So those are the critical curves and we have computed the univariate limits along all those critical curves and they're all identical and so this is a proof that the limit is actually exists and is equal to the value the common value of all those critical curves and now <clears throat> the last thing is we can create a plot that has both the function and all the critical curves embedded into it and we can again clearly see that the limits along all those critical curves are indeed um, zero so this is how Maple computes those bivariate limits. And in general, uh, just as a closing remark, the critical equation does not necessarily factor into linear factors as we just had in our last examples. But then instead of using the linear factors, we can compute series approximations to all the critical paths and use those. Um, and we only need approximation up to a certain order in order to determine what the limits are. Thanks very much for listening.